Hey TCS TV viewers, it's Dave and Evelyn from The Camera Store and today we have something a little different for you. We finally got our hands on a full production Nikon Z50 and so we want to put it head to head against another camera. We decided to choose the Nikon D7500. It's a great camera in its class, very similar specs to the Z50 and very similar price point. We want to see how these two stack up against each other. We decided to take these two cameras to the mountains to try them out head to head. Now I chose the Nikon D7500. It's about two years old right now, but it's still a really decent camera. Now I chose the 18 to 55 kit lens and also the 70 to 300 AFP DX lens in case we come across some wildlife. Yes, now you have the old DSLR <laughs> and I have the new mirrorless camera, which is the Z50. And this is Nikon's first APS-C size sensor mirrorless camera with their Z mount. And so it's the same kind of little brother camera to the Z6 and Z7 that came out about a year ago. And I also have the 16 to 50 millimeter DX lens, as well as the new DX 50 to 250 millimeter lens. And so why don't we go and take some photos and see what we think? The Nikon D7500 features a 20.9 megapixel APS-C size sensor. That's great resolution, gives me a lot of good details here at the lake and some of the stuff I've been shooting. Now it is a traditional SLR camera, meaning when I look through the viewfinder here, I'm looking through an optical light path out through the lens. Now I can switch to live view mode and use this rear screen, but on a bright sunny day, it's tougher to do. And at my age, I have to actually put my reading glasses on to use that. Now it is a weather sealed camera featuring a magnesium alloy frame and it was so nice and comforting to be out in the wild, especially when some of the snow was falling out of the trees on me. I didn't have any concerns about this camera whatsoever. This camera features about 8.2 frames per second as far as the frame rate goes, and that's really nice. Now, when I'm shooting landscape like these lakes, I really don't need that. But it's nice to have when I'm shooting sports in action and hopefully some wildlife if we ever see some today. Now, to go along with that, we need a decent battery life, and that's where SLR cameras still have the advantage over mirrorless cameras. We're getting about 950 shots out of a camera like this, but on a colder day like today, we're going to certainly reduce that. But it still gives me a big advantage over the mirrorless camera, and that can be a lifesaver. When I first picked up the Nikon Z50, I saw right away that this was a much lighter and more compact body compared to the other Nikon Z bodies, the Z6 and Z7, but also significantly compared to the D7500. It's about 250 grams less in terms of weight and overall just feels significantly smaller, but they didn't chimp out on the grip. The grip still feels really nice in the hand and kind of gives you that DSLR feeling when you're holding it. The other thing is that because this is a mirrorless camera, there's a lot of advantages that all mirrorless cameras share. And to me, the biggest one is exposure preview through the electronic viewfinder. And of course, electronic viewfinders have come such a long way. This one here is 2.36 million dots and it has this great Nikon glass in front of it. And I found that it's really sharp, clear and bright and just looks really good overall and is better in a lot of ways compared to an optical viewfinder. When you're able to see your exposure before you take the shot it takes away the need to actually chimp and look at your photos because you know what you're going to get when you take the photo when it comes to the image quality i'm really happy with the quality of images that you get from the aps-c sensor it's still the same 20.9 megapixel sensor that we see in the d7500 so there's really no surprises there but the one advantage that you do get is the phase detection autofocus system so this camera has 209 phase detection autofocus points across the sensor and that gives you really good coverage of the sensor and i can shoot at 11 frames per second with continuous tracking and so i wasn't sure if that was going to be the case because I heard that it might not be but now that we have a full production unit we were able to test that and we we're really happy with the tracking abilities it's maybe not as advanced as Sony and Canon and some of the other systems that we have seen but Nikon has already come a really long way since they first brought out their Nikon Z system cameras 
The Nikon D7500 has a pretty sophisticated autofocus system. We have access to 51 autofocus points that do cover majority of the sensor. Now, a feature I really like is face detect, and the only way to get that with this camera is to use live view, but I do find that it's a kind of a sluggish contrast detect autofocus system. Now, let's go see what Evelyn's up to. Okay, so if you can just turn your shoulders a little bit that way and then chin up a bit. Hey Ev, how's it going? Oh yeah, that looks good. Just a second. Yeah, that's really nice. Did you come down here because you want to trade cameras with me already, Dave? <laughs> there are a few things I do like about that camera, including face detect through the viewfinder. Yeah, the face detection autofocus system works really well on this camera, but I am a little jealous of your weather ceiling, especially because I've been nervous about putting this on the ground in the snow because I don't want any moisture to go on the bottom because there's no weather ceiling around the gaskets, and especially this battery door is a really weak spot for yeah, it. Speaking of the battery, how is yours holding up? Because mine is still showing full bars. <sighs> Yeah, my battery is not as good as yours, that's true, and I would totally buy some extra batteries so that I could have the EVF with exposure preview yes. with phase detection autofocus, Yes. but you know what's really good about the phase detection autofocus? <laughs> what is really good? I can use it in video. Very true. Yeah. Very true. Yeah, and I don't have the same amount of crop that you have. So both have the 1.5 times crop because they're APS-C sensors with the lenses, but yours has an additional crop making your full crop over two times for 4K video. Yeah, so if you're gonna use this in 4K video, you're gonna to wanna to pick up some really wide, you know, primes or wide zooms to really get the most out of it. Yes. Now, how does your video sound when you're monitoring it out in the field? Okay, I don't have a <laughs> headphone jack, it's true. Um, but we both have the hot shoe, so we can put an external mic on yeah, if no. we wanted to. I also have a mini HDMI port, which is a little more robust than your micro. <sighs> I have a micro, yes. I do have the mic jack, and then of course, the one thing that I have that you don't is I have a vlogging screen. So this can go 180 degrees down. Okay, but let's say I want to put a selfie stick on there. What that's going to do? It's better than nothing. <laughs> like I can use this to hold the camera. <laughs> Nobody's gonna hold it like that. Now Some at least might. you have the option to actually see that. My screen does articulate, but it's not anywhere close to a selfie no, screen. No, it's better than nothing. I mean, yes, I would much prefer a fully articulating screen or even at least one that came over the top, but obviously with this design that wouldn't work. Um, but having something so that you can do some vlogging or selfies is it's pretty good. Overall, the 4K video is really nice. Now, mm -hmm. if you want to go slow motion, you do have the option to go to 60 or 120 if you step down to 1080 video. So for some reason, which is a mystery, I seem to be getting a little bit better images out of this camera than your camera. Funny, I was about to say the same thing. My huh. images, I think, look fantastic. Yeah, you would think that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, in reality, they should have the same image quality. It really comes down to the user and what lenses you put in front of it. And of course, you have more lenses to choose from. Yeah. Um, natively. Natively, by all means. Yeah, Nikon's had the DX system for quite some time now, so I have a whole host of lenses to choose from. Now, you've mm -hmm. brought the entire Z the Series DX, DX lineup. <laughs> lineup. Yeah. Um, so far, I mean, we have this DX 1650 millimeter lens, and I don't mind it. I found it's actually fairly sharp for the range. Um, I wish it was faster. It's f3.5 to 6.3. Which is a bit slow. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little surprised by a kit lens like that. And I'm also not loving that it is a compact lens that you have to click out to activate it. I I much prefer lenses that you just mount and they're ready to go. I just find that it's an extra little step and it's a little bit annoying. I agree. I agree. Now, you do have the access to, with the FTZ adapter, you can put any Nikon lens you want on there, basically. Yeah, yeah. I'm still not sold that this Z mount is really necessary on this DX camera system. Um, it's a lot of space that it's taking up. Um, and of course, now Nikon has given themselves three different lens types to work with in their production line, which I could see as being a bit of a challenge. Um, but I hope that in the next little while, we're going to see more Z mount lenses, both on the full frame side and this DX side to really flesh out the system. Another important thing we should mention about these cameras is the media. So yeah. both of them use an SD UHS-1 compatible card and of course the bigger brother to the Z mount system, the Z6, Z7, they're using XQD cards so it is one difference uh, in the lineup. Yeah, now I really like the XQD card format but it's a much pricier card mm -hmm. and for this level of camera I have no problems at all with a single SD card. Yeah, it does seem like that this camera is just like 
the D7500 is more aimed towards advanced enthusiasts, people that are into photography, and I do think that this camera is well positioned for people that already own Nikon DSLR cameras. Yeah, I agree 100%. I mean, we do have the full line of lenses to choose from on this, but you can also adapt them to this camera here with the FTZ adapter. Yeah, and I think that the experience for someone once they use a mirrorless camera versus their DSLRs, it's really difficult to go backwards to an optical viewfinder. Are you finding that? Um, I have, and we've been shooting a lot with mirrorless cameras, and I, I don't struggle with an SLR camera because it's sort of second nature for me, but I really miss some big features that a digital mirrorless camera gives you. Yeah, I mean, I love having exposure preview and I think really that's the main benefit to me for going mirrorless is that you have that ability and you have a much better autofocusing system. And I think that overall for more kind of like entry to advanced enthusiast level, um, they're going to really take advantage of that. It's, it's like a um, really easy entryway into photography. Yes, yes. And that actually brings me to another point about this camera is that the interface, just like its big brothers, is really nice. Nikon has kept it very similar to the DSLR cameras, and so it is a nice transition. Um, it's kind of interesting. They've added a couple buttons um, that are on the touchscreen. They function kind of like uh, touchscreen buttons, but they're not um, customizable. So they stay what they are all the time. There's a display option as well as your zoom options and um, it's kind of interesting that they're on the screen they seem fairly responsive um, but it would be nice if we could customize those the Nikon D7500 has a lot more tactile controls and buttons on the outside I find including some dials here if I want to set it to continuous high continuous low or single even and I do have this d-pad here which is a little more tactile way of moving around the menu system or changing my autofocus points I have the d-pad too and I do have the quick eye menu which is great I wish that both cameras actually had a joystick and that brings me to another point about this camera is that I do have the touch screen and unlike Sony cameras you can actually go through the menu and navigate it using the touch screen. <laughs> uh, the one thing that I, I wish that it did though is give the ability to actually move your autofocus points around when you bring it up to your eye and it's shocking to me that they haven't implemented this in actually either of these camera systems especially because they're more entry level D5600, D5500 cameras that came out like four years ago they have that. Yeah, I don't know why omission. these don't. Yeah, it's kind of like they think that's a very entry level uh, type of feature, but I think that even for the more advanced cameras, it's something that is, is really nice to have. So, I mean, I guess, you know, there are a few features that both these cameras have. Uh, I, I do have one eight thousandth of a second shutter speed. It's one compared to one four thousandth of a second. I don't know how much of a factor that is for yeah, that many I, people. I very rarely go up to that high of a shutter speed. I mean, sometimes it's nice when you're doing some crazy action tests, but other than that, practically, I, I don't feel like I need one eight thousandth of a second. <laughs> All right. I mean, so overall, uh, do you want to switch? <laughs> to the DSLR? No, I don't. Um, I'm actually quite happy with the Z50. Um, do I think that this is a good mirrorless camera option for everyone? No, I think there's some other cameras on the market that are still better in terms of lens selection and a few other features. But for Nikon users, if it was someone like Dave, who's uh, <laughs> with this Nikon DSLR, I think that it would be a really nice option. And especially for you, because you're a glasses user, you get to take advantage of the face detection autofocus, the exposure preview, and you can adjust your diopter. And so you can see, you can see Dave. <laughs> Ah, oh, I remember the days before glasses. Um, <laughs> it is one of those things. You have to look at this camera and how are you going to use it. So how important is battery life? How many batteries do you want to carry? How long am I going to be away without power to be able to charge this? Which yeah. is interesting because you can charge that through USB. Yes, I can charge with USB and I can bring extra batteries around with me. Um, if you were a more kind of rugged shooter, you're, you live the mountain lifestyle, the DSLR might still be the better option just because you have that ruggedness you can you can carry less batteries on with you um, but if that's not as much of a concern I would say for traveling this is a much lighter weight option and it fits so nicely in your bag it is it certainly is a more robust camera no doubt about that but I am leaning more towards the Z50 yes. <laughs> you know, because I love face detection I shoot a lot of people and that's a huge factor for me and yeah. I can carry some extra batteries and you know I'm not as rugged as my people might think I am I'm not outside as much but um you know i would <laughs> <laughs> well you are very pale <laughs> you're not outside as much <laughs> we drag dave out to the mountains but i do like that little camera and i think it's mm -hmm. going to do really well for nikon yeah. um but you have to factor in what's going to be you know what what points are really going to sell you on one system or the other 
So if you're like a new user to photography and you want to jump in at kind of a nice enthusiast level, do you go with more traditional style camera or do you go into sort of the new generation of style camera? Yeah, let us know what do you guys think so far. Is the Z50 more your style? Or are you still kind of more thinking DSLR? If you're thinking of upgrading from an older model, we want to know what you think. So please comment below. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell so we can catch you again very soon.